morning. My name is Michael Fulton. In this video, I want to talk to you about healing your soil, how to reverse desertification or even stop desertification, and how to regenerate that soil by exploiting some of the relationships of your plants and rhizobia and mycorrhizal fungi. I'll talk about that in this video. So first thing is the soil. And on top of the soil, you see I have a ground cover. And when it comes to reversing desertification, one of the main things that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to start with that first layer. Some people like to start with their canopy layer, which is also okay, but I want to start with the soil. I feel like the soil is the most important factor when it comes to reversing desertification. And so in this experiment, I started off with clover and a few different species of grasses. Um, and by doing this, I'm allowing this clover to cover the soil, the grass to cover the soil, and I'm hoping the two will form a relationship. And it's known that clover and grasses kind of help each other symbiotically. And this relationship with clover and bacteria is called, is called rhizobacteria. So rhizobacteria is the bacteria in the soil that's going to fix nitrogen or turn atmospheric nitrogen. And you might ask what I'm talking about. What do I mean atmospheric nitrogen? So 80% of the air molecules that you are breathing right now are actually nitrogen. You might think that they're all oxygen and it's closer to 20%. 20% of the air you're breathing is oxygen. Almost 80% of the air you're breathing is nitrogen. And then small amounts of the other ones exist. You know, carbon dioxide is far less than 1% of the air that you're breathing. So that is a ready supply of potential fertilizer. And so clover has adapted the ability to convert atmospheric nitrogen with the help of this rhizobacteria into fixed forms of nitrogen, soluble forms of nitrogen that can dissolve in water and can be picked up by plants. This dog is adorable. So that's your first trick. The next trick is to house an intermediary in the soil. And so you may or may not know this, but there's an intermediary that is going to be working in your soil. So this intermediary is called mycorrhizal fungi. And mycorrhizal or mycorrhizae is, myco means fungus and rhizae means roots like we talked about earlier. And so this fungus is actually going to create these hair-like strands essentially everywhere in the soil. And these hair-like strands are going to create associations with your plant roots. There's certain species of fungi that have adapted the ability to associate with essentially 85% of all plants and potentially more. And so most plants in your yard probably are gonna be capable of forming this relationship. And it's interesting because this type of fungus actually invades the root plant cells. And after doing so, it's able to make exchanges the fungus cannot exist. It will die if the plant dies. And so it's to the fungus's advantage to keep the plant alive. And the plant is going to feed that fungus with sugars and fats. And the fungus hyphae network, you could think of the hyphae network as like the fungus roots, if you will. And they're, they have an extremely high surface area. You might've seen these in your yard and they just look like white hairs in the soil. And these hairs will pretty much go everywhere in the soil and they're able to get really extremely high surface area with water with nutrients and things like that and so in exchange the fungus is going to be feeding the plant with water because it, it can sense the plant cells it has associations with the vacuoles in the plant cells and when those vacuoles start shrinking because of lack of water the fungus senses that and the fungus will help feed the vacuoles to keep them full of water helping to water the plant so what I'm saying here is in my yard, I don't really need as much water anymore now that I've saturated my um, clay soil. And so it takes a small amount of water to continue this. As long as my soil doesn't dry out and stays hydrated, it will continue allowing these plants to explode with growth. And I know this is hard to imagine being in the middle of the desert with 120 degrees day temperatures. And you're wondering how all this stuff isn't just dying every day. And it's because this symbiotic relationship has been successfully formed. I have symbiosis. I have mycorrhizae symbiosis. And so these plant roots are associating with this fungal hyphae network in my soil. And that hyphae network is feeding my plants 
with all the water they need to survive. And so they're much, much more resistant to um, drought and heat shock because when they, you know, when I hit that three o'clock, 121 degree highs, that fungal network is able to quickly give incredible amounts of water to these plants. So these plants can, you know, perform um, transpiration and, you know, dump thermal energy from their leaves to stay alive, to prevent denaturation of chlorophyll and all the other things that plants do to stay alive. So that's the trick. The trick is to have that mycorrhizae relationship. And you might ask, well, how did I create that relationship? And that is the question. So I did a number of things. I don't know which thing did it the most, but you know, I, when I first started changing the soil, I put manure all over my soil. I had like a you know, quarter inch layer of manure everywhere. And then I added a bunch of wood chips and ground up sticks and um, uh, ground up paper, um, shredded cardboard. I've added a lot of organic material to the soil. And another thing as well that I did that was an experiment is I bought some mushrooms from the store, edible mushrooms, and I pureed them. And I added them to my, um, one of those uh, liquid broadcasting things you put on your hose to broadcast things into your yard. I took that pureed mixture and I put it all over my yard. And I actually had mushrooms popping up um, recently in my yard. So I'm, I'm betting that it worked. I don't know if that's the best way to inoculate your soil, but that's essentially what I did um, to be able to get this hyphae network started because my soil was completely dead. I mean, it was compact. If you don't have fungus in your soil, it's not going to function. Most plants need that relationship in order to thrive. Once you have that, they explode with growth because of that constant symbiotic relationship of being fed nutrients from the fungus and the fungus, you know, being fed by the plants. And so together they're capable of thriving. Most plants can't thrive without that relationship. And of course, almost all fungus, especially mycorrhizal fungi, they cannot exist at all without that symbiotic relationship. I mean, there's some species that unless they're at the you know base of a tree, you won't see those fruiting bodies coming out of the soil because that fungal network can only exist near that specific species of tree that they've adapted to associate with. Um, another trick is, is my pond. And as you can see here, I have my pond. Um, essentially what happens here is I have a bunch of fish that live in this pond and I've programmed my irrigation system to add excess water to my pond a few times, a couple times a day, um, five days a week. And when that happens, the pond overflows, but I've made a special spillway that allows the water to go a certain direction that I want it to, this direction that I'm pointing right now. And essentially that will feed those excess fish nutrients, if you know what I mean, to the garden. And so that also helps that fungal network and that helps the plants. Um, it's just a natural way to fertilize your yard. Just be careful with chemical fertilizers in excess. In order to have a mycorrhizal relationship, you need the plants to be relying on the fungus and you need the fungus to be relying on the plants. And so if you are supplementing excessively, um, you might damage that relationship. You might cause the plants to not try to associate with the fungus. You might cause the fungus to not try to associate with the plants and then you don't get that symbiosis. You know, small amounts of fertilizer, in my opinion, don't really matter. It's not gonna hurt anything as long as it doesn't get to the point where you are giving so much nutrient that that symbiosis breaks down and the plants plants and fungus don't, don't attempt to create that symbiotic relationship. And that's a common misconception. So I wanna make sure that's understood. Um, let me know if you have any questions about this. Um, I know I constantly have new questions about this and I'm constantly learning more and more about the intricacies of these symbiotic relationships. And they're fascinating to me and seeing them transform my yard has been um, quite the exciting adventure. Something I forgot to mention as well, um, when I add carbon to my soil, I like to put it in my wheelbarrow first and I like to inoculate it with some soil that I've inoculated with mycelium which is just a fungus culture that helps to make sure that I get nice mycorrhizal fungi association in my soil because the organic material that I'm applying to plant surfaces, the plant soil surfaces has been inoculated. And I've identified a few of the species that are most effective with the plants in my yard and then taking soil samples of those 
plants that have those successful associations and I'm able to harvest spores and to continue keeping that mycorrhizal association with my plants to make sure that they're um, effectively connecting to that mycelium hyphae network so that they can have access to nutrients and phosphorus and fertilizer and water and all the stuff that plants need and love. So hope this helps you. Hope this kind of summarizes some of the pieces of information you've received and hope this helps you to reverse desertification, to make that desert soil that you're trying to fix into something that's productive and thriving and that invites plants and food. Let's change the planet. Thanks for watching.